I moved out to the countryside because I wanted to live simply and sustainably. But the one thing that put a damper on my crunchy granola eco dream was all the dang driving. It's a long haul to work and school and stores, but isn't that the price we're supposed to pay for bucolic living? You know, cars give us independence, convenience, control, but at what cost? Our communities are built around the automobile, and streets are seldom safe for bikers and walkers. Cars isolate us from our neighbors, they pollute the environment, and they waste all too much of our precious time. <laughs> the good news is that transit ridership is up across the country. But the bad news is that nearly half of Americans have no access to transit, and so no choice but to drive. But people, it doesn't have to be this way. Together we cause this problem, together we can solve it. Now think about this. 80% of our passenger capacity is driving around empty. That's nearly a billion empty seats. Now, I wash off and reuse my tinfoil, so these empty seats just make me crazy. <laughs> and the effect of even one extra person in each car could mean, well, half as many cars on the road. Uh, but how do you get that extra person into the empty seat? Well, you could use a smart, modern-day digital solution, or you could use a good old-fashioned single-digit solution. Yes, Mom, I am talking about hitchhiking. And the big barrier, of course, is fear. <laughs> because popular culture has turned the hitchhiker into the evil archetype, the menacing roadside boogeyman. But the truth is, most hitchhikers just want to get somewhere. And the reason that our fear overcomes our desire to do good is because the thumb just doesn't give enough information. And drivers need to know that a rider is trustworthy enough to let into their car. Well, this is just the sort of problem that the new sharing economy can help us solve. Companies like Airbnb, TaskRabbit, Relay Rides, and others are part of a $26 billion peer-to-peer -peer network explosion. Now our homes, our cars, our labor, even the clothes in our closet can be shared with trusted strangers thanks to the network. Features like user profiles with photos, verifications, feedback, and ratings, all of these turn a faceless stranger into a fellow human being with a story and a reputation. And that allows us to move from fear and scarcity to trust and abundance. And the best sharing economy models take all the boring nuts and bolts away from the person-to-person -person interaction. It's more fun that way, but it also frees us up to use our instincts, and that helps to keep us safe. Which brings me back to the hitchhiking and how we can plug this most versatile and efficient of all ride-matching systems into the new sharing economy. As a hitchhiker, what I need is a better story. And by that, I mean I need some information-rich clues that will persuade a driver to stop. For example, I can use a folding, branded dry erase board that drivers can see from down the road. I write my destination on the board, I hold it up, and I wait for a passing driver who's going my way to stop and pick me up. And if I feel comfortable, I hop in, buckle up, and away we go, not to California or bust, mind you, just into town for some groceries. And I also have a photo ID that brands me as a member of my ride-sharing network, Karma Hop. You can see my ratings and profile online. And it's these two little bits of information that say, I'm legit, and you don't have to go out of your way, that make all the difference to the driver. Oh, and I have on my smart little telephone the first ever app for hitchhiking. And here's what it does. I can access a map of good locations to get a ride, very important. The app shows where I start my trip and where, where, where my trip ends and who I'm riding with, and that helps to keep me safe. And because this works best with a big network, I have tools 
that will help me invite others to join the fun. So, hitchhiking, retooled for the 21st century. We're piloting in, in Lawrence, and we know it works because my volunteers and I have tested it on over 150 test rides. And this is my favorite part. Even with random strangers, random strangers stopping to pick us up, our average wait time on the side of the road, seven minutes. Seven, seriously, seven minutes. Now imagine, if you will, a world where we can use one another's vehicles with their billion empty seats, this massive fabric of mobility, in the same way that we would a bus system. Only this bus comes by every seven minutes, goes all the way out to Oskaloosa, Kansas, and is driven by our friends and neighbors. I don't have to imagine it. That's how I got to work yesterday. And let me tell you, it is empowering. And if you'd like to plan ahead, especially for you know, your daily commute, you can download the Karma Carpooling app. Well, not right now, wait till after the show. Um, and you could do that right today. But here's the catch. True carpooling, which involves a common destination, and the drivers are not making a profit, well, this needs a big pool of participants. So you can't just download and then sit around on your app waiting for a ride. You have to do a little bit of work. You have to invite your friends and your neighbors and your coworkers to join too. And it's this proactive community building <clears throat> that just isn't taught in driver's ed. But it should be because the future focus of transportation has got to be on moving people, not on moving cars. But the best part of all, is we don't have to wait around for the government to solve this one for us. We could do it ourselves, and we could do it right now. We have the resource and the empty seats. We have a successful economic model that primes us for sharing. We have apps and algorithms. All we need is now is for enough of us to pull together, because after all, we are not stuck in a traffic jam. We are the traffic jam. So take an empty seat, and let's get there together. Thank you.